Welcome everybody, thank you for coming. Um, this is uh, the entrepreneurial way. And uh, just before we start, I would just uh, thank to Lip that is sponsoring us with the venue here. And uh, we welcome Daniel Cashley. Just uh, before we start, just a bit of uh, background. Someone went to the chair here. <laughs> Uh, this is an initiative that we are trying to get off the, the ground. Uh, we will be interviewing co-founders and founders of uh, startups, uh, successful startups, and um, yeah, uh, we we would like to, to share with you the experience of today of Daniel, and uh, he founded the, in 2010 Spontact, is a web Swiss community. And he grew over 20,000 people in just one year. And uh, maybe you will share us the secrets of this. Uh, <laughs> all the secrets. <laughs> all the secrets uh, <laughs> to make also us successful. How many of you are trying to start a business here? Okay. <laughs> How many of you tried to try started already? Okay, good. Okay, so um, let's see. Ah, by the way, we have also a hashtag uh, that you can post the questions uh, while, you know, and uh, Daniel and myself will try to reply at the end of the, the, the meeting. Um, so, Daniel, uh, what's, uh, could you brief, briefly introduce us, uh, Spontact, what sure. it is about? Sure. Uh, I guess most of you have, have heard of Spontact, probably even used, I hope so at least. Um, I think Spontex, for me, it's really about getting like-minded people together uh, for any uh, spontaneous leisure activities. And spontaneous is, is a very uh, important part in, in this, and also the contacts. And I'm not talking about just friends, so you might have Facebook groups or such, yeah. but really like-minded people that could be, be anyone uh, in your proximity. So the word Spontact originates from these two, the spontaneous uh, activities as well as uh, contacts, making contacts, spontact. So this is really the core of what it's all about and I think this is the, the, the idea behind Okay. Spontact. And did you fund with other three people, right? That's were right, all yes. students? Um, yes, uh, were students okay. at that time. Um, maybe to go back at the very beginning yeah. uh, of when the idea started. Uh, it goes back to 2007, actually. Okay. Um, it was very interesting. Um, I guess all three of us, um, we had this idea of, uh, at some point, we probably want to get into a startup at some point. And, and I myself started off with some ideas of, uh, in the area of, of leisure activities, there is not so much which, which helped me at this time. And yeah. this would be very interesting. And I talked to an old friend of mine, which, which became then the, the co-founder and CEO, uh, Christoph Seitz. Uh, he's a, an old scout friend of mine, so I, I kept in contact with him uh, very frequently. And he came up and said, you know, you're talking about this uh, startup, about uh, leisure yeah, sure. time yeah. activities. And my friend, he said, my friend also talking about it. So why don't you talk? Uh, all together and, and see what, what's coming up. And but you, we were talking about this leisure activity three years before than when you founded the company, right. right? So That's it right. took quite long to get started. Exactly. Yeah. From the idea to, to the business, right? You can imagine 2007, 2008, um, you know, technology, the internet, yeah. the mobile internet was not so advanced at this point. So our discussions that we had these times, they were still about sending SMS and, and stuff around and, and a lot of things changed since then. So there was quite some time we were just discussing, not really starting a, a company at this point okay. until 2010. Then. And who inspired you? It was just your, let's say, need or, or you guys need or it was someone, you know, looking for activity and you say, oh, I should start this. The, the idea originated from our own uh, okay. personal needs. Uh, we were all living in, in Zurich at this yeah, part. Yeah. And those of you who live in Zurich, they know that if you move to Zurich, you would not have the easiest to, to just find friends. It's, uh, okay. it's quite hard. So we were in the situation where we had friends, but 
for for a lot of uh, circumstances we these friends were, were busy they were doing other stuff and there yeah. was this desire to why don't we find people who, who we can do uh, crazy stuff and okay what was the first activity that you put on on spontat i can't re can't remember this far uh, i guess one of the first that we did um, that that happened um, uh, pretty much when we had the, the first uh, prototype out uh -huh. was uh, we we did a uh, uh, ski vacation in okay. Grindelwald yeah. and there was this great event of uh, splash the pool race. Okay, probably not heard. It's 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 crazy fun. It's uh, when at the end of the season they have like a snow covered ramp. Yeah, and you have some fun mobile where you. You, okay. you slide down and you end up in a water pool and that's uh -huh. in, the, in yeah. the mountains, right? So we just uh, put it out and we found people who joined us for, the, for this crazy event. That okay. Was, that was great. And when exactly, when was the, for you the tipping point and when you decide to leave your job and start <coughs> this activity? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, as, I, as we discussed, it yeah. took quite some time for, for this yeah. point. Uh, a lot of things were just, we were fantasizing, we were meeting up, having fun, mm -hmm. scribbling stuff, and, but not really concrete doing the step, step. Of, of, of starting and, and starting it full time. So uh, it was also, uh, personally, it was a shift. Uh, I was at that time following my heart to Finland Okay. Uh, moving there uh, for eventually five and a half years okay. and just working for a company at this point. And I, it was great to see that my two friends at this point who then founded the company, they were willing enough to, to start it, to, to put the efforts in. And I was almost waiting for it at this point. So okay. uh, one day they came up to, to Helsinki where I was living and, and they brought... From a, Zurich. From Zurich, yes. Yeah. So they brought a presentation along. Uh, that they had put together for a yeah. pitch to myself yeah. to get me in to and it it ended up with the team that were picturing it and there was a picture of myself very unfortunate uh, picture of myself and they said you know you have the choice either you join us we put a, a more recent uh, picture yeah. of you in or you will ever have to live with it <laughs> so that was the tipping point that eventually and uh, which kind of personality had your co-founders yeah um, the CEO, Christoph Seitz, he was uh, pretty much the visionaire. He, okay. he had these crazy ideas. He was, uh, he, he was dreaming a lot of the time, putting new ideas in, which we then had to bring him back and said, you know, yeah. let's start, let's concentrate, let's focus. <laughs> so he was also the emotional uh, yeah. type and eventually, of course, responsible for getting the funding. So mm -hmm. he was probably the one emotionally having the the, the, the highest ups and, ups and downs yeah. uh, of all of us, I guess. And then there was uh, Florian Specker. He was um, <coughs> uh, concentrating, developing on the on the server side, yeah. doing all the development there. I myself was uh, responsible for the product and the mobile development. Okay. And then later on, we got a fourth Peter Shiratsky who did who helped out in the marketing part. Okay. So. But in terms of personality, who was the you know the one that uh, was pushing more, or uh, the one that was more calm on, on this? I guess uh, I said that uh, Chris was the, the emotional yeah. um, roller coaster. So all the, all of other others were just I, you know trying to keep him calm. No, or? I guess uh, Florian on the other side, he was the opposite of it. He okay. was the one. Okay, let's do it. And just stay calm. Just. Focus. Okay. Let's let's do it. Now we're somehow in the in the middle and okay. uh, trying to balance things. So. Which but, mark? But interesting is really, um, I think the core team really brought in a lot of different expertise. <coughs> so we were all from different areas, yeah. different uh, different educational backgrounds, and I think this this made enriched the team, team quite a lot team. in the end. Yes. So the first thing is uh, to be successful is uh, having a good team, right? Having a good team and also. I would recommend getting good people together. It's, okay. You you waste so much time if you have people who uh, who do not deliver, who, who are not at the uh, at the edge of, of technology and yeah. things. And you yeah. can save quite a lot <coughs> having the right people around it. It doesn't make your job easier, of course, if you have people who know things better than yourself. Yes. Yeah. But it definitely helps on. Okay. Speeding up. The Which kind of market uh, market segment do you target initially? And where did you go at the end? 
Yeah, that was interesting because uh, there was yeah. a, a big shift. Uh, I think initially what we thought, um, of course we were concentrating on urban areas. Yeah. Uh, we knew the idea of Spontex would not work in, uh, in on the countryside, where it's the density of people, is, or the yeah. density of users is, is very low. So the focus in the city. And we also thought uh, probably the, the users which which uh, would use Pontex most are, for example, students, mm -hmm. uh, people new in town, expats, yeah. these kind of people, more the younger generation in, okay. the, in the beginning. In the beginning. And yes. uh, in the end, was what, what was the market segment? In the end, it was quite different. I think yeah. we still have a lot of expats in it, but I think very interesting for us to see that it's not the young generation who are, who are using Spontex, but it's, let's say, the almost middle age between 30 and 40. 40. Yeah. Uh, socially active people, um, male, female, very mixed up. So that was very surprise to us, and, and also great because it, uh, the the potential market segment but, yeah. opened up quite a lot. And uh, what was your business model, at least in the beginning? Did you already had the business model, or did you just try to put something online and uh, later on see what what will happen? Yeah, uh, I think right at the beginning. Um, I think we were quite convinced that this is an idea and there's a potential okay. uh, for it. Um, what, what we, tr we had some ideas, how, how would we eventually uh, get, generate revenue yeah. out of it? Of course, yeah. every time we pitched, every time we, had, uh, we faced investors, that was the, the most important part. So we had some strategies uh, put ready uh, of uh, we could have commercials, that's probably the easiest part, probably also the one who, who doesn't bring yeah. us much of, uh, of revenue in here. Um, but we, we had ideas that we could um, have a, um, a premium model at some point, offering additional functionality. And this, uh, those of you who use Pontex know that this has uh, just been introduced, I think a yeah. month ago, yeah. eventually after all this time. And also we, we thought that uh, category interest category sponsoring would be very interesting. So, for mm -hmm. example, you had the interest category of um, let's call it um, wakeboarding, and you mm -hmm. would you would have someone who would like to sponsor okay. this part for. Yeah. How much money did you invest for the first version? The, the very beginning was on our own budget, so yeah. it means what we try to do is uh, keeping uh, expenses low, uh, trying to live a very let's say uh, easy life. So. Uh, not spending too much on, on, on things like that, like vacation and stuff like this. Forget about vacation anyway, if you want to, <laughs> to uh, uh, create a startup. Um, so very little, at some point later on, um, we tried to get private investors in it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the difficulty really, as you will see, those who try to get investors in is you need to convince them with something that's already working, right? Yeah. So in our case, it meant uh, where's your community? Is Spontex growing? Yeah. Like, have you succeeded um, validating your initial idea? And that took quite some time. So at this point, it was very hard to find. But we, we were quite creative, uh, especially our CEO uh, with his vision. Uh, he even went to uh, this, uh, the Schweizer Fernsehen mm -hmm. for this uh, traders show, and okay. he tried his luck there just to get us financed. So. And he, get, he got in, he was on, on television at that point, but unfortunately, those who know traders, it's, it's I think 10 questions you have to answer quick to answer correctly with the help of the traders to, to get the, the final uh, amount. And he failed at the very last questions, where he even took uh, um, someone helping him out, giving the wrong answer to ah. not get the cash that we hoped for. So. Okay. But a bit of a uh, bit of um, experiment and okay. is, is always very helpful at this phase. Regarding the, the idea validation, right? How did you run the customer interview yeah. in case you had uh, someone on, on the community? How did you uh, manage to get the feedback from from them? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think really understanding how how meeting uh, how the the whole arrangement of who's joining uh, and what time are we going to uh, yeah. to do the activity where do we do it uh, this is a, a process that we needed to learn first um, we have seen our competitors that came quite often and, and sometimes they also vanished uh, quite often also not really focusing on this part and what it now seems very easy in the application you would go like 
what's special about it is actually yeah. uh, is what needed and that took us quite some time to go there uh, it turned out that doing an activity is it's not that you would, uh, as, as in Meetup, for example, you know what you do, you know when you do it, you know where. It's, it's like a process that develops. Yeah. I want to do a certain thing, so let's, it depends on who's joining and where we do it uh, and when we do it. So this okay. interaction has to be built and that also made us probably different from, from the companies, but from did competitors. You, did you send around you know, um, emails asking for feedbacks or really you know, meeting the people that were trying to uh, yeah. create events on your yeah. platform. We, we didn't really do uh, customer interviews at this yeah. point. So what we what we did was participating, like going to the activities and okay. see how yeah. people were using it, what yeah. they were talking That's about it. And sometimes it was quite funny to, to not reveal in the beginning that we were the founders and developing <laughs> it just to hear what they were talking about. Yeah. It. And I think we learned quite a lot from from, from what they liked, okay. what they disliked, and, and we took this to improve and adjust the, the product. And when and uh, how you were sure that people would you know, pay for uh, such a uh, platform? That's a very good question because we knew that people would not pay for it. So <laughs> this, is, this is a service where you, know, you take for granted. And that's always the, the tricky bit for developers. You, have to, you, you cannot expect revenue when you build the community. So, I think if we had considered this more carefully in the beginning, I don't know if we had started it. So yeah. our approach was more, if we can manage to get the community, we'll find a way to, yeah. to, to get revenues out of it. Okay. okay. And uh, what was your strategy against your competitors? And who were your competitors at that time? <coughs> Yes, there were there were many, but uh, to, to name maybe two, Plancast or for example Gonadu, mm -hmm. uh, but they were mostly, as I said, um, one were really focusing on events. It was more like an event agenda where you could say, <coughs> I like that I go there, yeah. and the other one was more I set up an event by filling out all these details, when, where, with whom, and okay. spreading was the only the only bit was left. So we differentiated having this process of evolving the activity mm -hmm. with the details. And I think this made us probably uh, succeed more likely than, than the others. And do, this was already you know, a, a good key point for you in the beginning or you, later on you discover and you find out how did you, you differentiate from them? I guess that was a learning over time. Yes. So, yeah. It's also difficult in the beginning to see whether a competitor would be successful or not. not. So we would yeah. watch, see how, how they did it and how they succeeded or not. So you just kept an eye on, on them, but trying to, to, to differentiate yes, from yes. them. And not freak out on, on every other competitor that would try to, to, to do the to same. The same. Yeah, that's right. Did you have uh, any metrics to measure your community? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Which uh, kind of metric did you use? Um, to say to the investor, for instance, that you were growing and you yes, were going well. Yes. Um, I think it's important to, like, um, analytics is something that people would anyway use these days. But I think with analytics, it's, it's also important to measure the right values. Yeah. So what, what helped us quite a lot is, is uh, for example, the pirate metrics. Um, those who know it. It's a, it's a very simple but very efficient way of looking at the, uh, the different phases uh, of, of an application use. Uh, pirate metrics is the name comes from, from this abbreviation. Yeah. It's R, it's like the, the pirates do, yeah. right? And it stands for this uh, acquisition, activation, retention, referral, and not so important for us, but the revenue part. But this is, and these are all important numbers. So not just uh, how successful our, our ads, our campaigns were working in mm -hmm. the acquisition phase, or the activation, how do we get people register and use. Okay. But also, of course, retention, how do we bring them back? What do we need to adjust to, to make them uh, okay. using it? Did you experience any, you know, any good number or bad numbers related to the retention of the clients or your platform, your platform? Or it was just you know, the one that was signing up also using the platform later on? Or did you try to, no, I think to get them on board again? I think like the, the daily active user is a, is yeah. a very important uh, key figure. Um, I think it's important also to measure whatever you improve on the product to yeah. measure if this is exact, successful or not. Right. You, you would not 
try to implement something blindfolded, not knowing whether you yeah. would actually make a difference with this or not. So. Okay. And how did you sell to the enterprise customers? I guess you mean investors or? Uh, yeah. I mean, this part, and uh, you, you also sold to do enterprise customers your activity or your platform or, or not? For the, for the uh, categories, yeah, sponsoring, the for example, yes. I think it, what we tried to sell in the beginning was the idea. Mm -hmm. uh, these days, I think the idea is no longer uh, okay. enough. Um, these days, you, you need, if you approach enterprise yeah. companies or if you approach uh, investors, the like, yeah. uh, you need to show things work. Things are like you, you intended. So otherwise, it's it's not much worse. So you say that uh, you know one of your co-founder went to a TV show yeah. uh, to to get some exposure to, to the market. But how did you grow in just in the first year to up to twenty thousand users? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, this part of the going to the television was yeah. about the funding part. So that was very early. I, I, we didn't have a product at this point. Uh, what, what we tried to, to do to grow users was uh, a bit of a mixture. Of course, you all start with the social networks, try to spread it, but also try to be where your users are. Uh, we experimented a lot. We had uh, commercials in, in the Zurich tram, for example. We had ads in, in Facebook and, and other, other places. I think what really helped us was the PR part in the end. Yeah. Um, we were lucky that I think the whole idea of, of Spontex was uh, very much uh, caught up with the, the solo mode trend, the mm -hmm. social local mobile trend, yeah. also the discussion about online, offline world merging and therefore we were very much, very easily had access to, to the media. We were in I think several major um, uh, print medias yeah. and we had coverage in on small television as well as the, the peak that brought us uh, a couple of thousand users in, in the 10 for 10, 10 for 10, uh, and that was great. They picked it up and yeah. it was like a commercial show for us. And it was free, you know, we okay. didn't have yeah. to spend uh, yeah. a dollar. So, so if you can try to, to hang up your idea to promote it in a, in a way where it's interesting for the media to, to write about, and not just we have a new product and we'd like to sell it, then you would be much more successful. Okay. Yeah. And which part of the growth did you trigger and which part came, you know, as a, as a, as a let's say, a cause of that? Yeah, I, I guess we were quite surprised about yeah. how the, the media was picking up on, on the story. So I think this part was, it was intended, but it was not so much controlled. Okay. In our ways. But the other part, uh, growing initially, I think this is uh, what's important. And for Spontex particularly, uh, is having the critical mass. Uh, yeah. We discovered, uh, we knew that, that there would be a critical mass, we didn't know in the beginning where, how many people in one location would be enough to, to continue uh, yeah. the growth, the natural growth of, of the uh, Spotex community. So you had also, a, let's say, a good number of users in the first years, in the first year, but uh, how did you grow your infrastructure? Like in terms of people, IT, and uh, these things. Mm -hmm. I think the first time we were really surprised was the, the television coverage about Spontex, which uh, our servers would just go, you know, they would just for fun. Exactly. Uh, the, it was no longer uh, responsible for a couple of hours. Um, uh, we didn't expect this many, of course. But uh, over the time, um, we did have to, to rebuild and, and uh, renew the infrastructure. We had to. Uh, also redo certain parts of the application, redo uh, parts of the, the server and so forth and continuously growing as, as it demanded, the user base demanded. Okay. okay. And by when did you saw the first revenue? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never? <laughs> Actually they do now, but uh, it's been no longer in the okay. part of it. It's, yeah. And uh, last, um, all the way... <laughs> It's bad for business, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Why and how did you exit your startup? So now you are uh, employed, you are working as a consultant. That's right. Yeah. And uh, why did you exit uh, your startup? I think we, we could just uh, continue from, from where yeah. we uh, ended discussing. I think the idea of Spontex, we knew we could not 
make people pay for just the service yeah. while, while we need to grow. And this was our main focus after we had found uh, what worked yeah. for the community. Growth, getting into new cities, new markets. Yeah. And what we needed was having a strong partner, media yeah. partner. And media partners don't do it for free, so they were asking for a lot of shares, of course, which we could not uh, finance ourselves. Okay. So losing shares by adding new partners was, was definitely part. Also growing, mm -hmm. uh, once we sold it then to, to um, Scout24, we're still involved, yep. but slowly giving up control as more and more people involved is something probably hard for, for co-founders, <coughs> as in the beginning it was yeah. all... What they did was managing and steering and yeah. all of a sudden you, you start losing ends Control. and things are sometimes not going where you think they should go. So we try to give our best in, in consulting the first year and yeah. but slowly realizing that it's growing and it needs to, we need to let it go at some point. Okay. And then I think the third fa factor is also, um, I mentioned in the beginning we, we discussed about Spontex already in 2007. Yeah. So it's, I think, five years and yeah. at some point personally we went through so many up and downs it's it's also time sometime to move on to to let go and, and look forward to new adventures who is the owner right now of the of a spawn that um it's um jochen schweizer group yeah. who sold it from the scouts 24. Yes. Yeah. and how many users right now has um we have downloads uh, way above uh, half yeah. a million. Active yeah. users will be somewhere in a higher um, five five digit number. Okay. Yeah. And most uh, the two countries that we cover, uh, Germany and Switzerland. Okay. Let's move on, maybe on more on, on the tech side, but not gain, uh, going too much in, uh, into the details of okay. the tech uh, mm -hmm. or which kind of language did you use or things. But mm -hmm. uh, what function could your product do first? Like, uh, I can imagine that you know you started with some futures, but then you later on added more futures. Yeah. But yeah. How, how was it? I think the key difficulty really was yeah. to, on on one side, people to set the bar low enough that people would post their activities in yeah and this is quite tricky like how can you make it fun and so easy that people would just have an idea place it into yeah. as one side and on the other side um how can we make the the activities in the platform relevant to you if you go look into it and how can we make it relevant uh, for example uh, if the community is just starting and there's not hundreds of activity in it so the focus was very much at this part to to improve to make this better and, and invest in this okay and uh how did you build it by all everything by yourself or did you use some yeah some we, we yeah we started up doing pretty much ourselves in the beginning yeah. uh, we we focused on mobile first we focused on, on iOS devices first okay. at this point. Uh, we did development ourselves, back end and, okay. and front end, uh, the like. Probably not what I would do in, again in the, in the next startup, but that kept uh, investments very low in the beginning, of course. And okay. we also brought in the, the experience, and uh, that's why we used it. Uh, we, we then continued for the Android platform to mm -hmm. use uh, a company in Romania. Okay. Uh, outsourced it there to, to develop this and we had also at one point which probably not many know is a Facebook platform also which at some point we took off because it, it wasn't working nicely and, and as it ended. Okay. And how long it took uh, to you to let's say from uh, the, the first few lines of code uh, to the final, not to the final, but to the yeah. first version. Yeah. It, did you use any kind of a lean approach or bootstrap it? Or what did you experience? Uh, I mean, what we tried from the very beginning was yeah. really doing user-centered design. We, yeah. we, we wanted to have a product that user would like to use and that was easy to use. There was yeah. no way we could have to explain first before the users yeah. uh, could do that. So that, that was a, a very strong focus uh, in the beginning. And I think we, we just, as we learned more, we, we were uh, improving on this part. And I think 
we lost a lot of time during that phase. Um, yeah. Because at, in 2009, the tools that, that you have at hand these days, they were not as developed as, as they are now. Uh, I guess if you, if you are familiar with the, the tools available today with uh, Sketch, Marvel, InVision and so forth, you don't actually need to, to develop any single line of code. You can, you can have a good designer, you can, you can build a prototype uh, in, in, in a few in, minutes, in, actually. Yeah, or let's say hours or days. Hours, but yeah. but it, it helps you really much to, to prove the idea that you have in mind very quickly. Uh, what we tried at that time was we, we implemented, made the product available to users and then test and we lost a lot of time yeah. Uh, in that initial phase until we get the results that, that we were looking for. So what would be your advice on, on this? Uh, definitely, I mean lean approach, lean startup is, is, yeah. is the key. I think uh, I would like to, uh, to mention a, a colleague of mine yeah. who was a, firm, a former working colleague uh, who did this very well, uh, it's Reto Lemler from, from Testing Time. Yeah. Uh, for those who, who don't know, he came up with the idea of uh, uh, he believed that, that, that there was a, a need for companies to have uh, test recruiting as a service. Yeah. And instead of doing research, uh, asking the companies, doing interviews and such, he, he made the approach to just build a website who would exactly promote what his idea was, just to see is anyone reacting or not. So he got quite a lot of feedback in the yeah. following weeks, which proved his hypothesis that that there was really a need and he could then start building it. So don't waste time uh, yeah. putting everything in place, but really concentrate on what is the, the minimum that you need to have to make it viable, the yeah. MVP, test it, test it as, as quick as, as possible. possible. There's the extreme phase where uh, the Google Design Sprints who, who tends to make it in such a short time that you have answers to your business questions solved and tested with a prototype within weeks or within one week in, in this particular case. So don't waste your time, validate first, and then start exactly. to execute. Exactly. But I must say, in our case, maybe this delay that we had was good yeah. for us because it helped us being, being at the right place at the right yeah. time, which is also important. If yeah. we would have been much quicker, would we still be at the right time to be picked up by the media or would we have been too early at this point? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, Based, in, based on your experience, when is when to start putting real time uh, into something? I think it's important to... First of all, definitely it's important to give it a try. If you have an idea and you really believe in it, give it a try. But of course it's also important to, to do expect manage, expectance management. Like, you need to know what it means to, to start a, a business. It's not yeah. something that you do part-time, for example. Yeah. Uh, you really need to invest time. And there's a saying that uh, if you haven't tried for two years, then you haven't even tried. So you, you will never see a startup who would just succeed by their initial idea. So it's, a, it's something that will have their failures. And it's important to learn, to improve, to adjust and also at some point to let it go if it doesn't work. So yeah. I have seen startup who would continue over years uh, where you would have to say, let's move on, it's not working. Okay. So how to be the, the product that user of? In your case, was it just you know, for you a matter of going into this event and try to, to see how the people think about your, yes. your, um, yes. your product? Yes. But in general, how would you advise that? I think that? factors that people really like to use uh, whatever you're building, especially yeah. like a mobile application, is, uh, as I meant, already mentioned, the, the user-centered design, the, the aspect. Look at what, what people, what their need is. Uh, you're not just making a product and then you, you see uh, whether they like it or not, but think about from the user perspective what they would like to have, what pain points you, you are solving yeah, for them. For them. Okay. So that, that really helps that they would actually use it by themselves, yeah. you wouldn't have to pay lots of money for commercial, just that they would try it out and not come back afterwards. This is important, but I think these days it's also the quality that you need pr to provide. Yeah. Uh, it's better to reduce the feature set to a minimum, 
not based on, on trying to solve all the, the ideas and problems yeah. you have in mind to really reduce it, but bring it in a way that is a, is a very fun experience. The, the first experience of a user really matters if he comes back. Okay, but we all know that you know it's almost impossible to keep you, all your clients on board forever. Sure, sure. And you, there are cases that you will lose your clients. Absolutely. How did you try to to cut again your customer? I think in Spontex, what we have seen is that um, a large segment were yeah. were singles, and and they were using the platform. Uh, to get in contact with people, even though this has never been a focus of us. But nevertheless, a lot of uh, a large segment were uh, with this aspect. And as soon as they uh, were in a, in a kind of a relationship, the interest would, would reduce. So let's say uh, someone gets a child and the family aspects gets larger. So this fluctuation is quite yeah. normal, right? Nevertheless, what, what we try to do is for those who were using it to have experience and the success if they for example, try to look for, for something, yeah. that they would succeed going somewhere and meet people. And if they have done this and it was a great event, they would come back uh, automatically. Mm -hmm. And that's what we try to, to achieve in the first place. Okay. Um, what is your idea about mentors and advisors? During you know during uh, this kind of travel because it's yeah. a, it's a journey right that yeah, you need to journey. and you have ups and downs uh, how do you what do you think about advisory and mentors? Looking back, uh, I must say it would have been good to have some advisors. We we tried to to solve problems a lot ourselves. Uh, of course, as, as if you seek answers to your questions, you get many people who have answers. Yeah. Um, it's good, you can learn from them, uh, particularly from those <coughs> who have made certain experiences, uh, what works, what doesn't work. But it's also important that you think for yourself or your business idea. For yeah. example, uh, we heard along the way, we heard people saying you have to focus. You cannot have uh, like Spontex for all leisure activities. Yeah. You need to focus on sport or you need to focus on, on going out or things like this. But you need to think that is this really where you're heading? Because they, they do not know all the ideas and, and targets that you have for your, for your startup. So get advice, but, but, but think about the, the answers that you get. Okay. okay. So um, based on your experience, three secret, secrets to some of the people that want to start the business. This is I think it's eventually it's, it's probably the team who, yeah. who makes it really work or not. It'll be hard times, probably yeah. for most of you who give it a try. Yeah. Uh, particularly, I think in, in our case, uh, during the time of, of Spontex, I was living quite far off in Helsinki, okay. whereas the team was here. And I think if, you, if you're not having some good relations with each other, uh, then it's, it's going to be really hard. If, if there is conflict coming up, uh, you have to solve, you have to go over and, yeah. uh, and continue, then it's important that, that the chemistry is really right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But also I think the important thing is also give it a try. As I said, use the, the lean technologies, uh, test it out for a certain amount of time and see whether it works so you know best uh, other than assuming okay. whether that would have been a great idea or, or not. Okay, I think uh, I've asked so many questions. Uh, let's see from the audience, which kind of question do we have? Okay. Yeah, this is something that you already replied, I think. Analyze your numbers. Far at needs are a good start. Ah, ah, ah. Right, right, right. <laughs> ah, yeah. ah. <laughs> right. The pirates. Okay. Uh, what's the best way to learn how to start a startup? I think one of the best ways is definitely learn from others. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's always, if you start a business, there's, there's so many questions coming up, so many uncertainties. Uh, learn from them who, who, have, who have seen it, that's why you're here, I guess, yeah. <laughs> right? And also get help where needed. Uh, coming back to the, to the mentors, uh, yeah. these days there is a lot of opportunities that has been developed, uh, offered to you over the last years. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they, they're quite well, uh, worthful. Yeah. Uh, you get you get the place you get you got the support that you need in the beginning and this can very much boost and, and help you get started in the beginning yeah. okay any other questions yeah.
Yeah, we couldn't hear from you. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Okay. Good question. Um, okay. I think when uh, we heard first from from the Scout Twenty Four, that was during our uh, seed investment round. Uh, it was very interesting to see that uh, what. Scout group at this point was doing uh, was basically from the idea the same that, that we were doing. We have seen later on lots of concepts uh, theoretically how things should work and how it fits well also in, the, in their portfolio. Uh, I think the advantage that we had was that that uh, we already had the community and we had the proof that, that things yeah. work. So we, at this point we, we were quite valuable for, uh, uh, for Scout at this point to, uh, for an offer. I think that the value of the company is at this point is at this stage uh, is very hard to to evaluate uh, I, I guess it depends on if you are interesting to others if there is a if there's a market uh, interest there yeah. uh, that would raise otherwise you have uh, key figures on uh, how much you invested in time mm -hmm. and effort gives you some indication uh, user basis gives some indication uh, that maybe helps to, to get an idea of, of how much is it really worth. But it's, it's usually not the potential behind that you could always say if we have the community uh, you could make this much revenue so the value of the yeah. company w must be this high but that's not relevant at this point where you sell it so it's important to consider what is a good point to, to think about the exit yeah. to sell it. To yeah, it should be probably a mixture because you will not get to the end yourself, or unless you have some really uh, have stamina to to yeah. go there. Uh, but on the other hand, selling it too early is not uh, is not a good choice to yeah. because it's undervalued. Does that solve the question? Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. So another question: When is the right time for paid ads, and when you come re uh, rely just on the word of month? Actually, did you use any? Yes, we, we did use ads, ads in the application. I think this is probably just the easiest and, and straightforward way to, to, get, uh, yeah. to get revenues, uh, small revenues. Uh, I think it's important that with ads, it's not so much more you can earn unless yeah. you yeah. already have the large community. That's why I not said we had revenues because I, the, the sum <coughs> is small enough to not be relevant at this point. So we also knew that adding ads into an application like this would annoy user mm -hmm. if, if you have too many. Uh, so we need to be careful with this. Okay. Uh, and word of mouth, I think that's, that's the goal, right? I mean, word of mouth is the best uh, ad that you can have and it's, it's free of, it doesn't cost a thing. Uh, but to reach there, your product must be, must be really good so people really enjoy uh, using it so that they would refer further. Yes. Did you use any uh, Google AdWords or yes, uh, so other? Yeah. I guess we experienced uh, okay. quite a lot with different possibilities. Uh, mm -hmm. I think for us, more interesting were where you could really target to certain users uh, okay. to yeah. also test out uh, which one brought more active users in it, not just the, the ones who would download it, but also who are the ones who, who become, become <coughs> active and, and use okay. the application. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I should speak. Yeah. But why didn't you try a big city, not like a village like Zurich? <laughs> Barcelona. Good point. Good point. Uh, it's just good uh, leverage your value or better. Yeah, so it's, a, it's a good question, uh, particularly when we thought about how and where do we want to expand later on. I think Zurich was, we were thinking, okay, Zurich is a belt class, maybe not so much, but it really helped to have the community where we were, uh, because uh, as I said, we were very much engaged with uh, the first users, and, and if it was, would have been in Barcelona, of course, we had to be there also to to be in close contact with, with user at that part. So 
Uh, we also thought that Zurich was not so bad in the beginning, uh, particularly because we, uh, we focused on the expats, we focused on students, and Zurich has quite a lot of them. Yeah. Uh, but we did some experiments also in, in other countries. Uh, I was located in Helsinki, I thought it's great, let's use Helsinki also. Yeah. Uh, we, we worked there just to realize the culture is so different. Um, they would not use Spontex at all. So we learned about this. We had many translations in the beginning phase of Spontex. We had Finnish, as I just said. We had uh, uh, the Netherlands in it also. Yeah. For some reason, we thought that there was a very strong growth and, and, and interest also in this kind of uh, uh, activities and yeah. this kind of product in, in the Netherlands. But because we were not there, we, we had difficulties to push it uh, in this early stage. And then together with Scout, uh, we were, uh, had a much stronger partner. Uh, we also got a media partner in it who, yeah. who started to uh, take over the ads. And, and then we did, uh, the next one was Munich. Um, not so much Basel, Luzern, Bern, which we also created some kind of a, a user uh, centered, but Munich was, was then and then continued. I think we also targeted Berlin uh, in the meantime, so we came to bigger cities. But also very interesting, we had some um, ideas about going to the States, uh, Silicon Valleys, we had some yeah. contacts there, and again, um, no one would go meeting crazy new people, they would know, uh, you would never be sure what, what they would do if, you, yeah. if they would just meet up for some, some kind. So the, the culture again uh, it would, wouldn't fit. Uh, but for Switzerland, uh, it did fit, and, and that's why we started. I think, I think, uh, yeah. Uh, can you describe how did you create, you know, the autonomousness of the business? When when did you exclude yourself from the equation, and uh, the app and the business still do the work and uh, uh, bring you new customers? Okay, you mean at, at what point you could... At what point you could retire and uh, the application would not care of your presence? Okay, I see. Okay. I see. Yeah. Probably never. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I think, I think what before we thought about uh, selling uh, anyway was to have the proof, to have a community that would work and would uh, would grow without having put a lot of money, money. Into, into ads. Uh, to have the proof that after a certain amount, the critical mass would exceed, you would have a growth in it. Uh, that means for us, uh, we have the right product. Uh, we have set the bar low enough to, to contribute. We have the right mixture of activities for people to join. And then for the growth part, I don't think we were in, in the same need. Uh, growing, expanding was not necessarily our business or our strengths in that area. So that's why it was okay for us to give control. Okay, another question from the... Uh, what was the hardest moment in Spontact's story and how you went about it? I guess it's the financing part. Um, yeah. You might have heard that it's up and downs. You get an investor, you get enough uh, for, for a certain amount of time. Yeah. Uh, at some point, we had quite many uh, developers um, that were working for us. Yeah. And you can assume, even if you take uh, students or even if you develop in Romania, uh, the sum makes it up, eats up the investment very quickly. Okay. And you until you know how it continues, it's always a very uncertainty. And you have this uncertainty over quite a long time span. So being at the point where you don't know, do you, do you have the finances to continue next month or not? Yeah. That, that's really what, what, what was uh, the pain, the, yeah. the hardest part, I think. So how uh, many times you were out of the cash? <laughs> <laughs> don't even ask. Okay, good. I think the, the other questions we could solve, yes. and that's why I said that the team is important, that you can overcome troubles. You will always have different opinions in the team, yeah. uh, but if the chemistry is good, then you would find yeah. answers to, to continue. 
Okay, another question from here. Uh, did you use LinkedIn strategy to promote yourself? Not at this point, no. Okay. Uh, I think f uh, Facebook was uh, the main driver okay, for yeah. the social platforms. Okay. These days, uh, yes, of course, use it as yeah. much as you can, yeah. Yeah. seeing also. Yeah. Yeah. For how much did you sell the company to Scout24? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Okay. <laughs> Considering already existing community like International and Meetup, what did you feel the need to create Spontacts? Uh, but that was uh, some years ago. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. maybe uh, Meetup and International were not so famous as uh, exactly. right now. Right? Yeah. And and also as I said, I think uh, how how the concept works is still different. Yeah. Meetups great for you have this event like like this one here, so you can yeah. you can share, you can contri contribute, but it's not like I would like to go skiing next week. Yeah. Any other question? Okay, let's start from here and then we move there. <laughs> you mentioned you were uh, quite successful or present in media. So how did you go about then even knowing that you existed so that they would uh, be interested in having your story or even just knowing there is context and that's right about it? A report about it to make them write about it right yeah, yeah. make them but even before that maybe just have them realize on the radar there is such a thing like yeah. contact yeah so the first you are saying the first few clients actually uh, yeah. not clients but the uh, media so yeah the, the media, the media yeah. 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 same for same how do they find you yeah it's a good question of course we started off small I think the, the, the first uh, newspaper we were is probably uh, the St. Gala Tagblatt, as we mm -hmm. are originally all from the eastern part of, of Switzerland. So we started off small somewhere, and uh, if, 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 if a newspaper writes about it, it's being read by the other newspapers. And, yeah. uh, and if they think this is really an interesting topic, and they always probably look for an interesting topic to also pick up, then it generates some kind of like a, like a wave. Of course, sometimes you have to push also, and, and you push not by saying we have a great product, now please write about us, because yeah. that's not ending anywhere, but you have to come up with, with a trend or with, with the, what helps them to, to write about it, the, the interesting part, not the product, not the company who, who tries to make some business, yeah. but the idea of what, what kind of problem it solves in the community or, or how it helps people overcome certain, certain pains. So let's say more highlight the motivation that is behind Absolutely. the project. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And so and for the first tries, you just sent them messages, or you called them up and you explained this to them, or how did you? How did they know about? about yes, I mean, this? writing to them, giving them some hints. Wouldn't it be interesting to write about this topic? We have something very interesting yeah. for you. Yeah. I'm not sure about the ten for ten. If they would, if if we had asked them, or whether they would ask us because they have seen it in the in the NZ set, for example, before. Yeah or even on choice the, the television or I can't remember but it's mm -hmm. once you get the media cover you're very likely that others will write about it yeah. and smaller yeah. even more like the I don't know local something paper just picking up what's being written in the in the larger but this is I mean this is this is the the holy grail if you, if you have such coverage that's yeah. there yeah um. Um, so you create a, a business idea, and then you you develop a strategy to target a certain a certain um, uh, target group. Yeah. And you invest money in marketing. You try it in different ways. And my question is: one, um, you said that the mark the target group has changed. Mm -hmm. So how did that affect your investment in the marketing? How did you market mm -hmm. it differently? Mm -hmm. And the second question is, um, when, do you, when do you know it's time to quit? So you've tried something in marketing and it's not working. Is it a period of time? Is it an investment of money? When do you, do you, do you start understanding, okay, now this is, this is not working? I think we, we tried first to create the product that would work before wasting money on, on marketing. Um, it took us probably almost a year to too long for, as I would advise you, but yeah. in our case it took us almost a year to to believe that this is now good enough, that the concept works. Yeah. It sounds crazy if you look at the application, it's all like, it's obvious, right? But 
it's not. <laughs> That's why many uh, competitors did not succeed at this point. So uh, we created a way where we, we had the belief that this would work. And then we decided this, we called it MVP at this point, to go and, and try media coverage, to try invest into marketing and, and such. And I think what you have to do anyway is, is track, measure, and adjust. And that's, that's yeah. very much true for marketing anyway, uh, to see what works, what doesn't work, and adjust to, to spend your, your investment into what works best and, and where you, your, uh, mark, uh, your user group really is to, to learn from it. Yeah. I think it's very hard in some, in some ways to do that because you, you invest and you need the time to make it work. Yeah. At the same time, you keep investing more and more and there's yeah. a point where you say, okay, now this is really not working for me. I need to stop investing in this. I need to try in something else. And of yeah. course, when you open a startup, your budget is very, very small, exactly. very limited. And you really try to pinpoint the way where you can market it the smartest way, invest yeah. the minimum. Yeah. So this is basically my question. So well, where do you... Where do you I, I believe it's, it's important not to... If you believe this is your, your target group, it, it, as we have seen, it might not eventually be the, the, the most effective group. So maybe not invest all your efforts into just this group and, and see, okay, it did work or it didn't. So maybe try to have a variety, uh, different strategies that you, that you drive and measure. And as soon as you see this is not going anywhere, just cut it off to not waste more in this. And also the different channels, try different channels to see which one works best. And, and as we said, we initially target the younger generation, whereas eventually it was, it was not the young generation who used it large impact on, on where we would and how we would uh, spend the, the where we'd go in, in marketing and what channel. Next, next question, where was it? Yeah, yeah. Um, while listening to you, and it was very interesting, um, I had the impression that revenue wasn't of any meaning to you. And also, when someone asked the question, so how did you value your company? You were talking about the investment that you had made, you were talking about user numbers, but the word revenue wasn't in there, in this equation of determining yeah. value. So, um, was it, so, so what was the idea when you started the company? To have a proof of concept and then say, well, I've done something, mm. um, and then sell it? Or was it ultimately the idea to sell the company, um, not generating any revenue at all? I think revenue is important at some point. Uh, <laughs> I mean, why would you start a business anyway? Uh, I believe, particularly in the beginning phase, where you, you, you are pitching your idea, you are creating your, your business models, uh, you need to have some ideas, of course, how you, how you sell it and how you, yeah. how you convince uh, the investor of, of it's, it's worth spending. Uh, I think this is, Spontex is a bit different in a way that, um, and this is probably why if I had known, eventually I might not even have gone this path. But we believe that with having the community, there's many ways of giving revenue. And what we tried to sell investors besides the potential revenue that they may get, much more important in this case was the number of users and the community. Uh, because the, the investor could then calculate themselves what kind of uh, revenue that would generate. Any uh, our calculations in the beginning, they were worth nothing because they were just ideas. It could go this way, but none of these, of course, uh, became true. But the aspect of how you eventually can generate money is, of course, a very important part. I mean, I said we, we didn't have to focus, we didn't have to, uh, to have revenue in order to convince investors that was, that was special about it. But, but so you, I mean, yes, there, there's potential yes. for each and every investor, yeah. and yeah. you see the potential, but uh, materializing this potential yourself without selling it to an investor, was that ever on the table? discussion? I guess, as I said, the user base is, uh, the user growth is important, but of course you, we had some strategies on, on how we would get uh, revenues out of these users. And some of them, they, they're still probably ideas, which, which I would not like to yeah, uh, yeah. announce here. Yeah. Um, but but these, these are important for the business model to have these ideas of what you could do once you have the, the community built up. 
Yeah. You? Uh, yes. Uh, how good did you feel about your MVP? As we were like, this is it? Or were we like, okay, you know, this is not good with that, but we need to make the lead? No, I can tell you lots and lots of discussion. When is the right point to go into the market? Um, endless discussions, I remember. Uh, at some point, we just did. Uh, I guess, of course, we were using the feedback from the users. We were trying to to evaluate all the features that we had on the roadmap in order to <coughs> find out which one we consider the, the minimum viable product. At some point, you have you just have to try it. There's there's never the the perfect product ready. It's it's always a, a step. But make sure the quality is right, the experience for the user is right before you before you uh, invest in, in marketing or go live. Yeah. Okay, last few questions, because otherwise Daniel will run out of energy. Oh, yes. And <laughs> okay, yeah, go ahead. I really like the question from Alice. Alice, could you pick it up? Uh, <laughs> which one? Which, with your experience, do you think it's still worth it today to try and create the community based this product? Right. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Uh, probably depending on what kind of community you're trying to build. I mean, there yeah. is there is many communities there. If you try to copy something, you might you must have very good reasons to to start a new one. Uh, in in our case, I think we really believed in that there is there is no such community there yet. Um, we had the, the belief that this is really uh, worth a try to, to build and um, to build this community, even though there's already many new. I think the difference that we had in the beginning was to, we had the Facebook community very strong, where all the friends are, where you usually do your, your free time or your leisure time activities with, but to have not your friends, to have these new people yeah. somewhere in, in your proximity, that was a new model, and that's why we decided to go and, and to give it a try. Okay, yeah, here. Did you ever consider um, getting revenues from this community-based uh, product um, through selling advertising or creating a membership fees that had extra perks? Mm -hmm. you, you can have it since a month's time, yes. Oh, okay. There is a, there's a, um, a model that you can pay uh, every month a certain small amount and then you get ads free and then you get additional features uh, very similar to um, to LinkedIn or Xing where you would have extra features for example to see who's interested in your profile and, and also for organizing some additional features that, that helps you if you are doing it regularly so there is such a model yeah Yeah, another question from here. Have you participated in actons and startup events? So do you think it's helpful for a startup? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, this, is, this is the part where learn from other, yeah. other startups. I mean, uh, also, I, I don't like start, uh, companies who have this great idea in mind, but they're not telling any, anyone because anyone could copy it and it's very secret. And then they start building it over many years and yeah. just to finally realize it's not, uh, it's not, it's not worth the investment. Right? <laughs> so, so do share, do, do get your feedback and also these events are very great for, yeah. for that. Yes. So would you have at, at, at some point an event such, a, such this one to share experience or I don't think there is, you or? there is events that, that, uh, that, that we did not have on this one tax platform. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Last one. Yeah. Um, how did you get your very first users? So you have your product. You said you had your minimum product, and then you just uh, put it on the app store or what, whatever it was. And then, and then what, what happened? You just waited for people to download it. <laughs> how did the very first users? Find out? Yeah, that'd be a lonely job. <laughs> it was like fishing for you. <laughs> exactly. You could actually go to Google Analytics or the Analytics tool and just see like, ah, oh, we have a download. No, of course not. Uh, as I said, the minimal viable product uh, that happened uh, quite some time after we started. Uh, 
during the, the starting phase where we build these prototypes, and these prototypes were actual applications you could download from the store, but they would not organically download. Uh, the amount of applications in the store is too large to, to be picked up specifically in the beginning phase. So we started off like, you know, telling our friends, um, try, give it a try. We, we talked about people we knew, I talked about the idea, they would give it a try and see and uh, putting some ads in place, uh, as I said, and then see it. Uh, but we, before we uh, went live with this minimal viable product, the user base was small, uh, but it helped us understand what they want. It helped us uh, the product develop and adjust uh, the way it was needed before going live. live. The, the PR, which helped us so much to get the user base, uh, you only have this chance once. So better decide wisely on when to spend. Sorry, if I can just follow up on that. Yeah. Um, so wh when you were in before the minimum viable yeah. product stage, was it already called Spontact? So you had a prototype yes. on the App Store and yeah. it already has yeah. your name? Okay. Yeah. Yes, but uh, 200 downloads in the beginning, right? Uh, nevertheless, uh, it was always called Spontex, probably, yeah. It was always called Spontex, but the visual appearance would be completely different. We, we, we gave some tries on, uh, one time we had a version where you would see the different activity categories as icons, and you would just, with a click, select on what you want to do, more to get your, your moods, what, what kind of moods you are in. Uh, is it more like going out? Is it more like doing sports? Is it more like... And tr try the experiment with this. And yes, we did generate a version we put in the store for people to download, but don't do it. It's a, it's a waste of time. It's, uh, there's much quicker ways to do so. Okay, I think... Uh, yeah, last one, really last one. Huh? <laughs> Otherwise... I've been working with the same colleagues for such a long time. <laughs> <laughs> May I introduce that's Florian. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> 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 One of the things is an important question. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good question, in particular with you. No? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, I mentioned in the beginning the team is very, very important. Uh, you're going to spend so much time, you, you will have so many conflicts you have to solve with. Uh, if the chemistry is right and if, you, if the team. <coughs> believes in the idea and yeah. works together on it, even though <coughs> you need to sort things out every now and then, I think that's the most important part. So you still friend with him or is it? Absolutely. Okay, yeah, then absolutely. I think it was a successful team. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay, thank you for sharing with us all the secrets. Yeah, you're welcome. And uh, yeah, really thank you. I just want to say thank you to, to also the group that uh, tried to organize this event. Cyril, as uh, he started, uh, there is also Luis there that took care of the the logo here and also the this stuff here, and Matic as well that helped us a bit on marketing. So next month we have um, we have another event. Uh, the name is uh, one of the founder of Swiss Prime Technology, and uh, he will share with us again. Uh, all the secrets about my lock. That is, we will see what what is about. Um, okay, follow us on on the media, and uh, try to to join again us. Thank you for coming. Ah, by the way, we have some some drinks now, eh? So don't don't leave. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah.